What is up guys, this is a rebroadcast of my live reaction to the June CPI drop back on July 12th, 2023. I thought it was valuable because you can see how my live streams go, what I'm thinking, how I react, things like that. So anyway, if you want to join us for the live streams, check out all the places I do that. And that's it. Hope you enjoy the show. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Bitcoin and Markets. Ansel Linder here, your home for Bitcoin and macro. Since 2016, we've been doing this podcast. Um, today is CPI drop, so I'm going to do a live reaction to that. So good morning to everybody. Starting to get a little sore throat if my voice sounds off. So that is what's up. Let me share my screen. And we'll go into some preliminary things. And then we'll be refreshing the BLS website, uh, you know, getting the drop right as it comes in. So this is the website, BitcoinMarkets.com. You can subscribe for a free weekly newsletter. You can support my content. Everything there is, uh, or everything I do is on BitcoinMarkets.com. All right, let's go into the chart here. And uh, this is the hourly chart. We're going to see how this uh, price reacts to the CPI drop. It's it's kind of coiling here. and I saw some, I shared some uh, uh, charts on Telegram earlier about the tightness of the B bands, uh, you know, the Bollinger bands. And we've only had this tight of Bollinger bands on the daily chart in like the, like five times in Bitcoin's history. And they've all come at the beginning of big bull runs. So there is a big move coming here. Um, oh, just, I, I forgot to mention, uh, guys, I'm live streaming on YouTube, Rumble, Twitter, Telegram, and Twitch. So you can check me out anywhere there. If you're watching on YouTube or Rumble, make sure to give a thumbs up and comment down below so that more people can find the comment content. Okay. And subscribe. Make sure you're subscribed. So that's the Bitcoin chart. We'll keep an eye on that. Another chart we can be watching is the futures. Quick break in here on the edit, guys. You can find all these charts either on the Post for this episode, which is bitcoinandmarkets.com forward slash E359, or on the live streams on YouTube and Rumble, you can go back and watch those. S&P 500 futures, but that is on a delay. So uh, we will have to come back and look at that uh, 15 minutes after the drop. So it is 823 uh, CPI will be dropped here on the bls.gov forward slash CPI website you can see down here they still have the may number was 0.1 percent so what are we expecting today let's get into a little bit of a preview this is from zero hedge cpi preview dovish prints more likely than hawkish as headline inflation slides to three percent uh if you guys are unaware of my content you're new to my my show I have been in the transitory camp the entire time. I think we are stuck in a deflationary um, time uh, at the end of a credit bubble where default and deflation is the biggest threat, not inflation. And so this supply chain crunch and uh, the supply chain shock that led to high CPI readings, that was always going to be temporary. Uh, and that's what we are seeing right now as CPI continues to fall rapidly. All right. In our weekly uh, event preview, we said that while the nine Fed speakers on deck and the start of Q2 earnings seasons were uh, certainly notable, Wednesday CPI print was the big event of the week. Okay. Here is what the street expects the BLS report to be at 830 tomorrow or today. First, the all important core June prints that excludes volatile food and energy prices. So core, they expect uh, month over month to be 0 0.3 versus 0 0.4 last month for core. A uh, core year over year, which is just a cumulative month over month. People think month over month is the derivative, but no. Month over month is the instantaneous measurement of the rate of change. Year over year is the cumulative of the last 12 readings, right? Uh, that they think will come in at 5% versus 5.3 prior. So this is a slowdown in 
core, but let's take a look at what they expect for headlines. So June headline CPI estimates, they uh, are expecting month over month 0.3%. To me, that's a little bit high. I think we will be under that. I think this will be a CPI will come in way under these expectations of 0.3%, but we'll see. Last month was 0.1% 0.1% and that <clears throat> sorry that uh, 0.3 would bring the year over year to 3.1 versus 4% prior now that's a huge drop here from 4% down to 3.1 and let's take a look at i have this pulled up here this is a chart of the month over month cpi and the way that they're getting this is because the highest reading in this whole series of high, you know, the last couple years of CPI came in June of 2022. And it hit 1.18, or you could round that up to 1.2% in a month, month over month. That was extremely high, obviously. Uh, And then what happened the next month? Boom, it crashed below zero. So this was the brick wall that I had been waiting for, talked about every single day pretty much back at that time uh and that's where we got the brick wall and you can see there was now there is a definite change in character after that period where we're sitting about you know averaging 0.25 percent maybe something like that but i you can notice in the last say from october to now there is a slight downward shift and so i do expect cpi to continue down but Every month, you get a little bit higher. You know, it goes up, then down, then up, then down. So maybe this month we get a 0.2. I don't think we'll get all the way to 0.3 because there's stories like this one. This is out of Bloomberg. And U.S. online prices are falling at the fastest pace since May of 2020. Price of goods sold online fell 2.6% in June. That is actual deflation, okay? The prices fell 2.6% for online retailing. Uh, Online food prices, uh, food price rises have slowed for nine consecutive months. So food prices are still rising, but they are in disinflationary uh, character. Okay, 828, we have two minutes. Let's read a little bit. Online prices in the U.S. fell at the fastest pace in more than three years last month. In a latest sign that pandemic inflation is cooling off, prices of goods sold online fell 2.6% in June from a year earlier, according to data from Adobe Inc. released Tuesday. It was the biggest drop since May of 2020 and this 10th straight month in which there, there's been a year-on-year decline. More than half of the 18 main categories tracked by Adobe showed prices falling on an annual basis. And let's take a look at this chart here. So the solid black line is 0%, and you can see we are definitely under 3%, but that has been historically online prices fell year over year, it looks like. That is very interesting. Okay, the drop for appliances at 8.3% was the largest in data going back to 2014. Appliances are a big ticket item. Uh, Time check is 829. Declines were even sharper for prices in electronics and computers, which fell 12.9% and 16.9% respectively. Annual price increases for online groceries slowed to 7.6% in June, down from 8.2% previously, and nine or 10.3% in March. Okay, very interesting. So food prices are still going up, but all prices of all these supply chain, like long distance supply chains, which are appliances, computers, electronics, Those are going down, so the supply chain issues are relatively uh, contained. Okay, let's go to here and refresh. All right, June, uh, CPI for all items rises 0.2% in June. 0.2%. So it did come in under that 0.3%, which Wall Street was expecting, and I expected it to be lower. Uh, You guys just heard all my lead up there, and it was... I just have a sinking feeling. Nope, I am live streaming fine. All my feeds, sorry about this. Yeah, all my feeds are good. Uh, If you were listening there just the last few minutes, I'm saying, oh, 0.2%, maybe up and down and up and down. Let's take a look at this one more time. 
this is the CPI month over month. And you can see up and down and up and down. And I said, well, maybe we'll go a little bit up to 0.2, but not to 0.3. I don't think we're going to go there. And lo and behold, that is what we have. CPI for all items rises 0.2% in June. Let's get into this release. So the CPI rose 0.2% in June on a seasonally adjusted basis after increasing 0.1% in May. The U.S. Bureau for Labor Statistics reported, okay, 12 months, the 12 month came in at 3.0% because remember, this month at 0.2 replaced a 1.2% from June of 2022. So that's a 1% difference. We were at 4.0% last month. We're now at 3.0% this month, and we could see continued declines. But as uh, as we go back, I'm going to switch screens. I know my audio sometimes cuts out here on when I'm switching tabs. But next month, we have to be replacing this 0% read from July of 2022. So, so we might not see a drop in the year-over-year average next month when we get the July numbers, unless the month-over-month is negative, which is possible. Look at this. I mean, we went from 1.2 to 0 in June, July last year. We could go from 0.2 to negative 0.2. That's a possibility for July of 2023. And if that is the case, we'll see a continued decline. Um, that's what that's what we should expect. I think that we should expect CPI to continue down. We could see CPI under 2 or even under 1% by December. Easily. Easily. Let's continue with this. The index for shelter was the largest contributor to the monthly all items increase, accounting for over 70% of the increase. And remember, shelter is a lagging indicator. It takes a long time for it to work through the system because you don't um, sign a new lease every month. Some places in the world, maybe some places in the United States don't sign a lease every year. They sign it every two years. So that takes a long time for um, you know, cost, uh, or I guess rent to work its way through. And then owner's equivalent rent, which is what they use to estimate the, uh, consumption value of homes in the United States. That is a lagging indicator as well, because people will raise their subjective owner's equivalent rent by the market rate for rents. So it takes a little while for that to work through as well. It's not a perfect system. I'm not saying it's a perfect system, but understanding why it is the way it is and how it works, you can then use it as a point of departure. It's not a worthless point of departure. It's a point of departure. So anyway, let's continue with this. Uh, With the index for motor vehicle insurance also contributing, the food index increased 0.1% in June after increasing 0.2% in the previous month. And I have noticed myself personally going to the grocery store that the changes in prices have definitely slowed earlier this year. I would say uh, tail end of last year into beginning of this year. So Q4 last year, Q1 this year, I really, I definitely noticed the grocery prices rising rapidly. Um, But now I've noticed that they have leveled off and or some things are going down in price. Most definitely um, fruits and vegetables I've noticed have gone down uh, in price, at least in Florida here. So, okay, the food index, sorry, food at home was unchanged over the month while the index for food away from home rose 0.4% in June. Eat at home, guys, it's healthier anyway. The energy index rose 0.6% in June as the major energy component indices were mixed. The index for all items, less food and energy rose 0.2% in June, the smallest one month increase in that index since August of 2021. Okay. So all items, less food and energy rose 0.2%. Oh, that is good. Let me go back to this one. They were expecting it at 0.3% Wall Street. So this is, again, even the core is coming in under expectations. Uh, which is awesome. Indices, which increased in June, included shelter, motor vehicle insurance, apparel, apparel, recreation, and personal care. The indices for 
airline fares, communication, used cars and trucks, household furnishings, and operations were among those that decreased over the month. The all items index increased 0.3% for the 12 months ending June. This is the smallest 12 month increase since the period ending March 21st. All items, less food and energy, rose 4.8% over the last 12 months, way down from the the expectation for year over year, which was 5%. So 4.8 versus 5% expectation. So this has got to be good for prices. Let's switch over to the charts. And I'll go down to the five minute. We have some green action going here on the the Bitcoin chart up 3881 on the price. Not spectacular yet. This is this is a fairly muted, a fairly muted reaction from Bitcoin. Usually Bitcoin has much more volatile swing than this. I know that we are coiling. The pressure is building for a breakout here. So we will see, uh, come back in a few minutes and see what's going on there. Like I said, S&P 500 is actually, uh, it is delayed by 15 minutes, I believe. Is it 15 minutes or five minutes? I don't know what the delay is. Let's see, by 10 minutes. Uh, So we got three minutes till this comes out. The futures market we can see, that's just my level of membership here on TradingView. It has a 10-minute delay built in. I think if I spent way more money per month on this, I could get non-delayed figures, but NASDAQ is also delayed by 10 minutes. Let's take a look at the 10-year. Big sell-off in the 10-year. Boy, that was a big reaction because, uh, you know, people are, I mean, this is a very mixed narrative environment with higher CPI would mean that the Fed would want to raise rates more, right? Because raising rates is supposed to be clamping down on the economy. And how well has that worked? I mean, if we go back to the S&P 500 and we go back to and we go to a weekly chart. Since the Fed has been hiking in March of 2022, the S&P 500 is higher. So is hiking actually bad for markets? <laughs> that's that's the traditional view. But I don't think so. So actually, let's go back to the 10 year. Everybody was talking about this. Boy, was everybody talking about this. When it came up here and it was breaking 4%, everyone, oh, higher for longer. We're going up. We're going up. This, uh, you know, this is all of the bears came out. (laughs) All the bears came out and they were looking. They had had charts. I mean, I could go back and find some of these, but uh, they had paths like this. Let me draw a line. They're like, oh, this is the new normal. We're going up, 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 you know, and that's just kind of ridiculous in this era of low growth, low inflation, uh, transitory CPI. We're going down. We're having banking crisis all over the world. China's CPI is damn near in deflation territory. PPI's around the world are in deflation territory. That's the producer price index. Those are the one that those are the prices that precede the consumer price index. So suppliers and wholesalers, they get the producer price index, manufacturers, and retail gets the consumer price index. So the consumer prices lag the producer prices. It's not exact. And there has been some academic work that has um, shown that this isn't the case, but it, you, it it's logical that it lags the PPI. CPI lags the PPI by six months or so. And those things, PPI are going negative. CPI is going the same direction. Uh, and that means recession is coming, which means the Fed will be cutting, not that the Fed will be hiking. And here we see the 10-year in a very obvious top formation. I mean, it could be something like this where we go down a little bit and then back up, but I remain bullish on bonds. I remain bullish on bonds. Okay, let's see. We are at 
the delay is now over and look at that look at that green shot up on the s p 500 futures huge move much more prominent here than bitcoin's move bitcoin's still sitting at 3800 30800 typically the initial reaction from markets you know they reverse so we recover if they go up 1% on the initial drop of whatever news it is, uh, you know, during FOMC or during CPI, it usually reverses and retraces pretty much the entire candle. So we'll keep an eye on this. Still going higher. It is up half a percent in just the first one minute after this CPI. All right. Well, let me go to Bitcoin and I'll end on that screen. So guys, this is Bitcoin and Markets. I live stream here on a regular basis, usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, You can check out BitcoinandMarkets.com. That's my home base for all of my content. Uh, You can find me on YouTube, Rumble, Twitter, Telegram, and Twitch. Those are all my live streaming places. I appreciate everyone that supports the show over on BitcoinandMarkets.com. I appreciate all the guys taking part in the community over there on Telegram and That's going to do it. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.